All right, everybody. I woke up today thinking, self, we should listen to some John Mayer live. And then self reminded me that we should probably make a YouTube video for all the heroes that don't wear capes. So, we're gonna do both. And today I thought we could look at maybe something that's a little more minutia when it comes to live sound. Nonetheless, I think a good technique that we should know. And that concept is ducking. You know, that word that your phone always auto-corrects to? This is what your phone is talking about, ducking. And today we're going to use it on our bass guitar. I could try to explain to you what ducking is, but let's just get in and show you what it is. So. So right now, we just got our bass heavily compressed. And I think I like the way that sounds. But, especially if we're on a smaller system, this is really helpful for you guys. Um, and then on a larger system, it's really helpful just to create clarity between kick and bass. And what that is, is ducking. And to find the ducking section on your console, you're gonna select the channel you want to duck every time the kick drum hits. And you're gonna come over to the gate section. And right here on your second encoder, you have your modes for expansion, gating, or duck for ducking, right? And normally it would be set to self over on the key source section on the right hand side of the screen. So if we were to turn on ducking now while its key source is itself, we would basically just see the bass guitar being gated out of existence, right? So we need to go to page two of the gate, pressing the down arrow. And now in the key source on the right hand side, we can select channel one because channel one is our kick drum. So we've selected channel one. And now you can see every time the kick drum is hitting, it looks like the bass is being gated. So as it is right now, every time the kick drum hits and goes over this threshold point, the bass guitar is being turned down 26 decibels for roughly one millisecond, something like that. And if we went crazy with this, we can almost create some sort of weird, I don't know, tremolo effect, gating tremolo. But when we set it up nice and short, You don't perceive that the bass is being turned down, but it is. And the reason I said it's really helpful on smaller systems, if you only have two 18s for your entire show, you know, maybe you're doing backyard barbecue or whatever, those subs are going to have a really hard time keeping up with the kick and bass information. Maybe not so much more these days because, you know, things have gotten better, but if you're wanting to tighten up the relationship between your kick and bass, 
ducking is the way to do it, right? So, back over here again, I like to use the key filter to make my ducking even more accurate, if that makes sense. So basically all the key filter does is tell the gate to listen to a certain portion of the entire frequency band instead of 20 hertz to 20,000 hertz or whatever. So we turn on our key filter and tune it somewhere down to the low end, you know, 180 hertz where the kick drum is really active. And now every time that kick drum hits, we're pushing the bass guitar out of the way. We're pushing it down 26 decibels. What that allows your subwoofer to do is push out all the energy of the kick drum and then come back in with the bass and fill out that low end. So hopefully that was a good and quick little audio example for you guys today. I really hope you guys are out there kicking ass, taking names, just really whooping that ass like it was right. Hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, hit like, hit subscribe, say hi to your mother. I'll see you guys next time.